Now, let's skip down to the category of occlusion and measure that on this, this same set of casts. Now, let me read the instructions and you can read on the screen. When scoring occlusion, the angle classification is used. If the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar occludes with the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar, or anywhere between the buccal groove and the mesial buccal or distal buccal cusps, no points are scored. If the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar occludes with the mesial buccal, which is a class 2 end to end, or the distal buccal, which is a class 3 end to end, cusps of the mandibular first molar, then two points per side are scored. If the relationship is a full class 2 or class 3, then four points per side are scored. If the relationship is greater or beyond the class 2 or class 3, then one additional point per millimeter is scored. Each side should be scored individually and included in the point accumulation for this category. When we look at the right side first molars, uh, it looks like they are end to end. Uh, what I will do is separate the casts and I will mark the height of contour of the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar. Even though this cusp tip is not worn off, sometimes a cusp tip will be worn off and it's helpful to draw that line to imagine where the cusp tip would have been in a worn off or a restoration type of situation. <clears throat> then I pick up the mandibular cast and I'm going to mark the height of contour of the mesial buccal cusp of the, of the mandibular first molar. Now I'll occlude the casts on their backs. See how the lines relate. Looks like to me the lines are essentially on top of one another. So in this case, the mandibular cusp line is even with the maxillary uh, of the maxillary first molar is even with the line on the mandibular first molar. So two points would be scored in this particular situation. Now we'll switch to the left side. Again, uh, it's, uh, you know, you might be able to tell it, but I'm going to go ahead and mark the lines, the height the contour on the maxillary first molar and the height the contour on the mandibular first molar, and uh, <clears throat> when we occlude them, as you can see the uh, line on the maxillary first molar is between the, uh, the uh, buccal groove of the mandibular first molar and the height of contour. So again, referring back to the instructions, uh, this is not end to end, therefore no score would be uh, recorded for, the, or a zero would be recorded for that particular molar in this case. Don't be afraid to use your pencil to mark on your cast to help guide you accurately. Uh, they can be as I'm just wiping this off with my, with my finger um, off the soaped models and as you can see that you know gets the markings off there pretty easily. I'm now going to change the casts and move to a more complex case. Remember the DI form is measuring the complexity of cases or the number of things that are wrong. It is not intended to measure the difficulty of the case. However, with that said, this next set of casts, D1 dash, or DI-1, dash <clears throat> present great complexity, and in my mind, a very difficult case to diagnose and to treat. So let's measure a number of categories on the DI. Now, first of all, we can see them sitting there, and I think you can realize that there's a significant overjet. So if we measure that significant overjet with the help of our marks on here, we know that there's 11 millimeters, which is over the 9 millimeter limit. Therefore, there are five points that would be placed on the DI score.
for the overjet on this particular case. Now let's look at uh, another uh, category, and that is the overbite. As you can see, uh, there is an, an open bite, and uh, we had skipped earlier the category of anterior open bite. So let's read the instructions. For each anterior tooth, canine to canine, that is in an edge to edge relationship, overbite equaling zero, one point is scored. For each additional full millimeter of open bite, one point is scored for each maxillary tooth involved. No points are scored for any tooth that is blocked out of the arch or simply not fully erupted. When we view the occlusal plane at the vertical relationship of, of the incisors, they are, I think you can tell, and I can put this this way, end to end for all four incisors. Even though there is a severe open bite relative to the palate, this DI form is concerned with the relationship of the teeth only. So the four maxillary size of teeth are scored as four points on the, the DI. Okay? So zero, which is edge to edge, one point, four teeth, four points. I'm now going to, to interject a much more severe anterior open bite case. So we can see that's a, that's a pretty good one, isn't it? Um, all six anterior teeth are in an open bite greater than zero. So one point is to be scored for each millimeter of open bite per tooth. Now let's score this case. I hope I don't drop the cast. Not too many teeth touch here. Um, Beginning with the left canines, let's go on, on uh, this side here. Again, it's um, got to hold it toward the back. We start with the left canines. Four millimeters, I think, for the left canine. Uh, six millimeters for the left laterals. Goes up to eight millimeters for the left centrals. Of course, the right central is fractured. And it also is around eight millimeters with that fractured edge. Uh, then the six millimeters on the right laterals, and then three millimeters uh, on the right canines. Now, uh, you would kind of total those and write those out. And I've, I have already scored these, and that's a total of 35 points for this very severe skeletal open bite. Now let's look at the lateral open bite. I'm going to read the instructions for the lateral open bite category. For each maxillary tooth from the first premolar to the third molar in an open bite relationship with a lower arch, two points are scored per millimeter of open bite for each tooth. No points are scored for any tooth that is blocked out of the arch or simply not fully erupted. Now, uh, this severe open bite case that we were just measuring, again, it's very difficult to pick them up to show you because it is only touching on the very back molars, just about. Um, we can see that there is a lateral open bite on the right side with the right first premolars, and it's probably going to measure uh, you got two, about two millimeters, okay? So um, the second premolars are the same, so that's four points. Even though the, four, the, the first premolars, uh, or the first molar, excuse me, do not contact toward the mesial, the distal is less than a millimeter from the lower first molar and does not receive a score. Now, if we put it back down and move to the left side, I can keep them in occlusion. Um, the left first premolar is about one millimeter open and receives a score of two points. So the total points for the lateral open bite in this particular case uh, are, it would be six points. So this is the example of a potential extreme in measurement for an open bite situation. 
So let's now move to the next category, which is crowding. When scoring, measure the most crowded arch circumference, only one arch, between the first molars. From zero to one millimeter, zero points are scored. From 1.1 to three millimeters, one point is scored. From 3.1 to five millimeters, two points are scored. From 5.1 to 7 millimeters, four points are scored. If the crowding is greater than 7 millimeters, seven points are scored. When I separate the casts of the DI1, or the uh, case, that we were measuring earlier, and look at both the arches, the narrow maxillary arch appears to be the most crowded. This particular category of crowding is intended to be a visual estimation of the crowding. However, if I was an examinee trying to be as accurate as possible, I would literally measure the arch length and the widths of the teeth to determine the, the arch length discrepancy for a precise measure, which you could then defend if challenged by an examiner during the exam. However, in this case, if you look closely at the casts, there really is um, plenty of dental irregularities, but actually both arches have spacing. And I would be give both arches a visual zero for the crowding category. So let's look at the occlusion category for this particular case. We read the instruction, or we did read the instructions earlier. Oftentimes, for this category, I will draw the vertical line on the facial height, and I'm going to do that in this case. The mesiobuccal cusp of the upper first molar, I think I did that on the first cast when we demonstrated it. This again provides a more accurate vi visualization of the relationships. Uh, I draw the line on both maxillary first molars. We'll come over here and I want to separate on this case and give us a line here where the cusp fit. And this, this particular molar has a good cusp tip. So I include the casts on their backs solidly. If I look at them, looking on the right side, you can see there is a full step class two with the maxillary mesial buccal cusp positioned in the interproximal between the mandibular first molar and second premolar. That will score four points for the right side. Now we look at the left side, which is also in crossbite. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Note that the vertical line is forward of the interproximal area and, uh, and what I measure, let me see the millimeter reading, two millimeters. So this score will be the four points for the full step class two, plus one point per millimeter for each for past that. So that's a total of six points for the left side. So four millimeters on the right, six millimeters on the left, the score would be 10 points for the occlusion in, on this particular uh, set of casts.